this exact same room with about the same size of crowd. <laughs> this is a little friendlier crowd than the last time I was here. But, uh, you know, at that time I made a promise to uh, you folks that I would follow this closely, see if there was anything coming down the road with regulation-wise that might impact your ability to use your land and the concerns that you shared with me about some of the property and your rights being taken away. And so I appreciate Marilyn, she's stayed connected with me. Will has also at times and been able to, to give information. Marilyn's done a great job. When she sees this topic on our Board of Commissioners uh, meeting, she comes and, and sits in and takes notes, listens, and, and that's really, I believe, what prompted tonight's session was uh, her involvement, so thank you very much. I also want to thank Huey. That he's um, been following this for years. He's been our FEMA uh, expert at the county for long as I know, maybe as long as you've been at the county. And so following this specific item has been his chore and he comes to the board and gives us regular updates. We've been uh, trying to understand how this might potentially impact the county and its residents. And as what's been explained before, it's been a quite frustrating process because when we under, when we heard that um, National Marine Fisheries was going to sue FEMA in Oregon, uh, we had hoped that the state would be involved, that there would be public hearings on solutions, and instead what we got was people shut out and really a closed door session with uh, the two federal agencies to come up with a solution that uh, would satisfy NIMS. And uh, <clears throat> the frustrating piece for me is, is that you know, the state's already acknowledged uh, Richard Whitman back when uh, Governor Kitzhoffer was in office has, has already acknowledged that this could potentially um, jeopardize the current landing system that we have. And, um, and that really spoke to me this last year. I attended the AOC conference and we had a specific uh, breakout session just on this topic. And all of us as, whether you're city elected official <coughs> or a county elected official, we're mandated by the state land use laws to adopt comprehensive plans. We have to make sure that the comprehensive, comprehensive plans represent for future growth, a uh, 20 year growth span. And when you uh, sit in this meeting and hear that Tillamook, of all counties, um, if, if these rules roll out the way that they have been mentioned here this evening, uh, there's not going to be any developable land in Tillamook County. Um, and if you think about floodplains, um, one of the questions that I asked when we were adopting a comprehensive plan for the city of Springfield this, um, this well, it's the end of the year, and the large chunk of land that they've brought in, that they're wanting to bring into the Springfield city limits for development, for industrial purposes, happens to all be in, in recognized in that floodplain. And Springfield, I continually ask the question, are we adopting a comprehensive plan that's actually gonna meet the needs? Can they develop it? And Springfield really couldn't give us an answer, but they did say that, well, we've put these huge setbacks, they're several hundred feet, feet away from the river system. We think that we might be able to develop it. So this is, this is gonna be really challenging for the state um, if their land use system doesn't accommodate the growth and, and be able to the needs of the citizens, um, I don't know where we're going to go uh, in the future because all of our cities, uh, whether it's Cottage Grove, whether it's uh, Eugene, Springfield, all the cities are built around rivers and there's a, a large component of floodplain in their cities. Another piece, um, so, so I've been engaged at the county level requesting updates whenever we can possibly get it. I also serve on the local official advisory committee to um, LCDC. It's made up of three county commissioners, three city councilor or city mayors, and then uh, we also have a representative from the Metro uh, that, that serves on this body. And as chair this year I've, and last year, I I've been asking for regular updates from uh, LCDC on where are we at, how's this gonna get implemented, how are the rules rolling out. There was, at our last meeting, there was just a little bit of an encouragement that um, areas that have already been developed in these city areas that seek redevelopment opportunities might have an opportunity to redevelop under a, a program that would allow them to redevelop the land, but then they would do mitigation 
mitigation measures up further up the, uh, the river system to help uh, the endangered species. So that was kind of comforting because the city of Springfield spent millions of dollars and probably 20 years of um, planning to redevelop Glenwood. And Glenwood's all in the floodplain, and so um, there might be hope that all that work isn't for naught, but um, it, it's still questionable as to where it's going to go. Um, one of the pieces uh, that brought, was brought to my attention uh, this last year, um, you know, we're not supposed to have, nothing's supposed to be implemented yet. The county can continue to issue permits and do certain things. And I'm looking at my, uh, my planning commissioner, Ryan Sisson, gave me a call, I think it was close to a year ago. Um, and he was trying to get a, uh, a, um, a LOMA <coughs> go permit approved on an activity that took actu that actually had been done 10 years ago. So the, the, the bill was placed, the home was built, and, uh, and when he went to fill out the <coughs> form, uh, the form required, there was a new section in the form of this permit from FEMA that required a, a, um, a professional to declare that uh, the activity was not going to endanger the uh, species. Well, we don't have any staff on the board, and I worked with Mr. Fishing for quite some time to uh, find somebody uh, that had the expertise and the willingness to sign that document, and we couldn't find anybody. <laughs> so in essence, we had uh, a home that was, I think, being refinanced to take advantage of the, um, the great race, and they couldn't get uh, acknowledgement that the bill that they put in and everything that they did was according to law 10 years ago. It is my understanding and talking to Mr. Miller this afternoon that there has been a project that has found a, um, a, a professional that did sign, a, sign that portion of the form. But uh, in most cases, we have right now uh, a regulation or requirement in place that's not allowing us to actually process uh, Loma fill applications in, in uh, Glen County. Um, so, um, so again, that's, you know, some regular, new regular regulatory requirements that are going to cause problems with folks, whether you want to build an accessory building or, as we said, maybe an addition or some of these things that you already exist in the, in the floodplain. Um, so I don't have any answers tonight for you, but I assure you and my position as commissioner and as a member of the LOAC and also a member of the Energy and Environment Committee of AOC, I'm plugged in to try to get all the information I possibly can to understand where the reg regulations are. In fact, um, Mr. Miller um, had mentioned the uh, home builders <coughs> and et al. Uh, potential lawsuit, the threat of a lawsuit being filed. Uh, Lane County was asked this uh, last December if we'd be willing to consider being a, um, on that lawsuit. Uh, I brought that to the attention of my fellow board members uh, this last meeting uh, two weeks ago, and they gave support to legal counsel to look into it and make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners as to whether or not we should uh, consider being involved uh, with that lawsuit. So I'm uh, trying to find ways to help with this, but it is really, really difficult with uh, federal agencies that are not um, helping us get input and be thought forward in a solution. So. Hopefully our state representatives, I don't want to put them on the spot, but I, I think it's great that they're here. I really appreciate both uh, <coughs> Senator Podansky and, and uh, Representative Hayden being here because this is this could be very impactful for the state of Oregon, and hopefully we can find some solutions. So thanks for your time. <laughs>